Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Jackson. I'm a registered nurse and an assistant professor in the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Calgary. And today I have a quick video about how to read a rubric. And I'm going to use an example from my graduate class and talk about um, the cues in the rubric that can help you understand what to look for. So examples from nursing um, in grad school, but applies quite broadly to anyone. So I'm going to share my screen here, or hope to. So I'm going to try not to scroll too much with this video, but uh, we'll see how we do here with Zoom. So in a rubric, we lay out our expectations for what we want students to do in an assignment. And there's a few key things that can help you understand what we want in the rubric. Now, if your rubric is well written, it draws on Bloom's taxonomy. And I have another video on Bloom's taxonomy. It's my favorite. It is the most valuable resource you can use. So please make sure to be familiar with Bloom's taxonomy because it can make sure you are hitting the right marks. So when we look at this concept analysis rubric, this, this is an assignment for my graduate students where they need to analyze a concept broadly. The different categories of the rubric are defined by Bloom's taxonomy. So one of the biggest questions I get about rubrics is how do I know the difference between good and excellent? Or what is the difference between exceeds requirements, meets requirements, does not meet requirements? Where is the line? And where the line is, is usually associated with categories in Bloom's taxonomy. So for this specific rubric, if you give me this category here does not meet requirements, the Bloom's taxonomy skill that is associated with that will be description and understanding. So if you can define a concept or explain a concept at a basic level, that will not meet requirements because that's not what you're being asked to do. However, if you meet requirements for this assignment, it will be that you're using a Bloom's taxonomy level that is application and analysis. So how do you know if you are writing at that level? You look at a Bloom's taxonomy verb table. There's a million of them online. You can Google and say um, te Bloom's taxonomy verbs. Look for application and analysis, the middle columns. That falls in the meet require, meet, meets <laughs> requirements category. Okay, so to get to exceeds requirements, I want people at the evaluation level. So, towards, so towards the higher end of Bloom's taxonomy, I'm looking for synthesis, I'm looking for evaluation. How do I know you're doing that? You're using those types of verbs. So you can see that the different categories are not, there are different conceptual things that this rubric illustrates at the different levels. But the main overall idea is to separate the different types of Bloom's taxonomy skills. Now, when I write a rubric, I use Bloom's taxonomy. So um, you will see here in this first column, does not meet requirements. The concept is not defined. The concept is not clearly identified. So we're talking about understanding knowledge, those first columns of Bloom's taxonomy. When we look at meets requirements, we've got identified and a link between concepts is evident. That means that there is application. So if you can show me application, you're going to be in the meets requirements category. If you can say, if we look at the first column for exceeds requirements, the concept is clearly explained and its relevance to the topic or population of interest is established. So this means you have evaluated and now analyzed this concept. You have looked at it in a more robust way than if you have simply defined it. So Bloom's taxonomy can help you understand how do I get from meets requirements to exceeds requirements or that type of thing. One of the biggest problems people have in graduate school is they're writing with an undergraduate mindset, but we're asking them to do different cognitive skills. So if you are showing your understanding, but you're not applying concepts to real life, um, you're not going to do as well. The
challenge is that sometimes you do need to have you need to list definitions, you need to explain things at a very fundamental level to introduce your concept. So here, you need to give a definition, which is a foundational level of Bloom's taxonomy. However, you have to move from that definition up to a higher level. So if the definition is the only type of writing you have is that demonstrating knowledge, it's not going to work. But if you demonstrate knowledge and then go on to analyze and explain this is why this is the best definition, this is what this definition contributes that others don't, then it's fine to start with a straightforward definition and move from there. So it's not that every single sentence has to be an evaluation sentence. It's that the overall tone of your writing has to push to that higher level. So that's the difference between the vertical columns here. There's one other thing that I suggest you look for in a rubric, and you'll see that in this first column with um, how much, how many points each section is worth. This tells you what the instructor thinks is important. So here, definition, five points. Analysis of concept, 10 points. So I want more analysis arguably twice as much analysis as I want definition. So you might not necessarily want to use these as a mathematical formula as to how you apply your word count, but you do want to consider that if you spend three quarters of your paper using definition, that's not what's reflected in the point value. So the point value shows you where to place your emphasis. So moving down, I'll show you so summary of evidence, that's a lower level Bloom's taxonomy skill. I want comparatively less of that because you'll see the five there. Here, synthesis, critique, and application of evidence for practice. These are all really good Bloom's words. These are high level skills. And this is out of 15. This is the most important part of the entire assignment. So that's why it's out of 15 points. So, and then we have academic writing for five, totaling 40. So if I was looking at this, I would want students to say, this is the most important, that's where I place the emphasis. This is the next most important, that's where I also place emphasis. The summary and the definition are less important but these need to anchor the other two sections so that the whole thing is coherent and makes sense. So without, uh, if you didn't have a chance to talk to me, but you looked at this rubric, you want to think about where on the Bloom's taxonomy scale, when we look across, where, uh, where is the instructor asking you to be? Like what type of language in each column are they looking for? and what areas do they want the emphasis so if you kind of triangulate both of those things together that gives you a really good foundation as to how to start your assignments um, i also have a video about how to write essays in nursing and different models you can use and those also show how to translate from the rubric um, more directly into how you format the type of assignment you're going to write but those are the two top tips is consider where on the Bloom's taxonomy scale you want to be when you're going across here and also look for the points to see what is emphasized there. Uh, and we will, I will flounder with Zoom for a moment <laughs> and then say thank you very much.